so I need to get my voice right. <coughs> it's not it's not right yet. Back in the same. So when Viagra was first made, for each ten gram sample, that's about half what I've got, they needed to use thirteen and a half liters of solvent. But then after Peter Dunn applied the principles of green chemistry, they got this down just about 60 milliliters of solvent. And that's a huge reduction in the amount of solvent. And they not only reduced the volume, the solvents they used were environmentally much more friendly. That, that's, it. that's an extraordinary change, isn't it? Well, when you're first making these chemicals, it's important to make them quickly, and you're not worried about quite how much solvent you use. But once you start trying to produce tons of them, then you have to think about this more carefully. But even so, it's a remarkable achievement of green chemistry. I think this is important because when you're making these drugs, you want to do as little harm as possible to the environment. You don't want to use large quantities of chemicals which then have to be disposed of, either by incineration or dumping. And so the less you use, the better. I guess it wouldn't have occurred to many people that making these tiny little pills could even have a bad environmental effect. Well, making all chemicals generates some waste, just like you generate waste when you're cooking. You throw away some of the, bit, the feathers from the chicken or whatever. Similarly, you have to generate some waste to do chemistry. But what we want to do is to minimise it and make sure the waste that we do produce is as environmentally harmless as possible. So the reason why the sulphurs here, according to my colleagues, because I'm not an organic specialist, is because you could make the same molecule with a nitrogen or an, another group here, but then the body would chop the molecule up too quickly. It wouldn't work. The body would destroy it before it had done its job. Whereas if you put a sulphur and two oxygens here, it slows the process down so that there are a few hours before the Viagra is broken down and excreted from the body. Cool. All right. No, well, there's one other thing I will say. Yeah, go ahead. What do you got? You can see it's a really beautiful white powder. And this is really a tribute to the people who make this on a large scale because Often when chemists are making compounds in the lab just for their research, they never get it absolutely pure and there's always a tiny trace of yellow colour or something from a tiny impurity that may be just a few millions of a percent in there but just enough to um, give it some colour. And here you can see it's this beautiful white colour which shows that it must be really quite a pure compound.